Hello and welcome everybody to a, another episode of Consciousness Rising Zimbabwe and Beyond. This is a platform where you're going to come and meet very interesting people uh, locally um, from all walks of life in our alternative community as well. People that are doing great things, uh, have projects uh, and doing inspiring things and are contributing to their communities. And uh, my name is Tanya Norris. And today I have one of those people with me and her name is Sonia Pereira. And Sonia is, has been in our community for a very long time. And she is, uh, I would say, a psycho spiritual uh, facilitator and teacher. And Sonia is going to explain what that means. Um, and she uses predominantly Enneagram. Uh, but I also know that Sonia has a lot of other disciplines that, that she uses. So with that, we're very honored to have you here today. So thank you, Sonia. My pleasure to be here, privilege. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Sonia, I think while um, we're on this and we're having this conversation and you also being somebody, we would say maybe one of the elders of the community as well, I think it's a, a important thing maybe to give a shout out to all of those matriarchs and those people that came before us. You know, we've had some fabulous, uh, inspiring teachers to us in this country. You know, to mention people like Margie Watson, Dell Smith, um, Sylvia Schmidt. You know, they were all forerunners to our community and set very nice foundations in this community. And I feel, and I think a lot of people in the community also feel that you are joining, stepping into that role mm -hmm. of one of those matriarchs. Whether you want it, like it, believe it or whatever, I'm just saying that's how we view you. And with that, I'd like you please to just give us a bit of background as how you got into all of your psycho-spiritual journey. Hmm, okay. Well, I seem to have, for the most part of my life, even very young and as a teenager, an interesting curiosity that makes human beings tick. You know, what, what are we about? What are we, yeah, what are we about? And, and why do we behave the way we do and treat each other the way we do? So I've always had curiosity about our humanity and what we're about. Um, and in my early, late teens, early 20s, around 2021, uh, I actually had a visceral, um, a kind of visceral experience where I just felt something, you know, somebody said something, somebody said, what they said was, love is God. Now normally you hear God is love, but in that moment I heard love is God. And that kind of did a flip switch in me, and, and I just had this really visceral, visceral um sense of, of a glowingness coming into my body um, and you know that that was the the hook that really pushed me into the whole thing and then I really wanted to um, explore more about what spirituality is what God is what love is um, and all of that sort of thing and having come from a kind of Christian background um that was the first sort of avenue i took um but um i couldn't i couldn't i, I couldn't be part of the institution of it uh, i i found it very difficult to fit into the institution of it because it didn't really it asked me too much to have a blind faith and i'm not one to have a blind faith you know i'm, I'm going to be thomas dude saying show me your hands Mm -hmm. Tell me it's you. You know, I want to have the direct experience, so it's more of a knowing than a belief. And, uh, and but that didn't. And so then I expanded my horizon and, and I started really exploring a lot of other faiths that were around. And I found wisdom in all of them. You know, the wisdom is wisdom. Truth is truth. It doesn't really matter what clothing it comes in. Uh, but when somebody, when something hits you and resonates with your system, you sitting in truth. You know, there's no argument in you, and, and there's just this clarity, that, and and that's the way we kind of start opening to to our spiritual senses. 
-hmm. And then in my late 20s, I came across uh, specifically the Enneagram. And that was pretty much a, 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 a life-changing encounter um, because it was, it was a model that so clearly and aptly reflected us back to ourselves um, in, you know, um, you get a resonance with, with aspects that it would describe that, you know, just fit you. Mm. when you thought you were unique, you're all mapped out and there's a great relief in that. Um, in, in that you really discover that you're not the only one like that. Mm. And that the world is the same as you. So maybe I should just say a little bit about the Enneagram because you might not know much about it. What I'm teaching now, I'm, I'm specifically calling it now the authentic Enneagram. Okay. Because when people hear the Enneagram, they really hear more the sort of popularized version of it, which is not its original intention. In fact, you know, the popularized version, which most people know about, is this whole thing around personality types. Um, but actually, it has a much deeper, really, really deep wisdom in it. I mean, I've been studying this stuff for 30 years, and definitely I'm still learning, mm -hmm. which just shows how um, vast uh, this exploration of what our humanity is, which is comprised yeah. both of psychology and you know we are um <laughs> divine and human and uh, the enneagram basically in, in its origin um depicts the sort of basic laws of how reality creates itself mm -hmm. and it shows all the sort of different influences and manifestations of how energy transcribes itself if you think, into form and how influences come together and when certain influences come together there's disruption and when certain influences come together there's harmonization mm -hmm. and so it becomes kind of like a process tool that shows us reflects back to us where we come out of balance or out of alignment, these natural laws of influence towards um, thriving, really, just being a creative human being. Um, and yeah, so it also reflected what it means to really be human and, and the kind of culture available to us 24 7. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything about, you know, this is the irony of the whole thing. It's like we are simultaneously or concurrently whole already in spirit mm -hmm. and yet we're a development and the development is towards remembering the wholeness mm. you know right. it's only because we don't remember the wholeness that we feel incomplete mm -hmm. and that incompletion um means it creates within the system you know and we biological organic systems you know nervous systems that get activated and all manner of intelligent things um when we feel it you know, the, the system itself has very basic core needs mm -hmm. you know when we talk about our need for love or connection or relation or value or belonging or contribution collaboration all of those needs within us you know where they come from mm. why they, it's not like we put them there we born we born with them and mm. why are we born with them and it's like well this is nature saying these are the things that you need to thrive mm. <laughs> You know, for you know, that's the exact environment in which a, a human being has the opportunity to be creative, to belong, to feel connected, to thrive. Basically, mm. you, you don't have a sense of incompletion. Mm. You have a sense of being alive and 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 movement and creativity. Mm -hmm. But of course, all those very basic needs are severely, for some of us, less for others, wounded. 
mm. in our development. That's you right. Know? They wounded. They desperately wounded. And nature in its very incredible natural intelligence defines a way to protect us from that wounding when we're very young and our nervous systems have not yet developed the capacity to handle the overwhelm or to handle the disappointment or to handle the losses and, and you know it's just too mm. too much for a kid and so we we find these neat little tricks like dissociation you know we kind of move away from it so that we you know and it's the way nature holds and protects the soul keeps it alive so until the point where it can take the next steps to to grow into a stronger more conscious being mm -hmm. but you know we're a very long development process you know very long development process um and so what the enneagram shows us also is that that dissociation that disconnection um creates within us this this feeling and need you know those needs don't go away for love belonging value etc etc <clears throat> and in that kind of separation in that dissociation because now i'm i'm losing contact with my wholeness every time i contract i'm contracting away from my wholeness so now i have a sense of and i develop this idea of separation Mm -hmm. Now, the nature of separation is always going to feel insecure or uncertain or, and then we employ the mind to strategize how to get our needs met. And that's where the Enneagram of personality comes in, where it shows how we develop strategies to cope with our losses, to cope with our disappointments, to cope with our overwhelm mm -hmm. and to cover over our insecurity and vulnerability basically they're not a lot of human beings that are very comfortable with their vulnerability mm. which is, you know, that's where our humanity lies that's where we are most sensitive and everything about being deeply human is about being deeply sensitive it's my capacity to feel myself my capacity to feel you and my capacity to feel life but mm. because our world has become so wounded and so fragmented it's we've had to desensitize ourselves to cope and so part of the the, the work and as we learn in the, in the spiritual work is about resensitizing ourselves mm. which means opening all the places where we have shut down and learning to open again mm. and that's not easy i mean i always say to people spirituality is the true spiritual journey is not for wimps <laughs> You know, if you consider that you have to break your heart over and over and over again until you reach the unbreakable heart mm -hmm. yeah that's your and, and also in a lifetime you have to wonder do we even do that do we even get that far and how many people get that far you know to be anyone, totally who apply, in, in, any, anyone who applies himself to it but you see you have to have the, you have to have the willingness to turn mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. in that direction without mm -hmm. the willingness and, and that's just the beginning the willingness to turn into that direction okay mm -hmm. and a lot of people turn to spirituality you know and particularly when times are rough because there's this misguided idea that spirituality is uh, going to help you suffer less. Mm. But in fact, you know, what spirituality does, it teaches you how to suffer well and gives you more. Mm. <laughs> you <Yeah. know>? so <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm just interested when you were saying there, so... So when we're very young, we have these traumas and we uh, invent things to cover up our pain and emotion. Would you say that that then is, becomes the personality? Yeah, that's the, the that's, that's, that's the self-image. That's the, um, that's the structure. And the really interesting thing about this is that, you know, again, the structure forms itself. That structure, the ball, we're all born with a certain temperament. Mm. And they're nine different kind of temperaments. You know, the Enneagram is nine, Enneagram, drawing of nine. 
So mm -hmm. nine, I'm not going to go into the maths, but just consider the number of wholeness. But everyone's born with a certain temperament um, and then into a certain relation uh, environment. And that relation, so in other words, this structure develops out of this conversation between the temperament and the environment it steps into. Okay. okay. Obviously, the more supportive and loving and nurturing and freedom making your environment is and nurturing and guided then the less the, the less you you need to leave yourself mm. right you know mm -hmm. the less you need to defend the more and you find people like that who are really open with life and they're willing to be touched mm. and they're willing to show their vulnerability you know they don't have a sense of having to hide Mm. Whereas those who have a more kind of ruptured relation, mm. more traumatized relation, there's more contraction. So every time we contract, we're moving further away from our natural resource um, of spirit. Mm -hmm. And we start contracting into this kind of isolated, fearful, insecure kind of thing who then has to make a plan and strategy of how to cope with that. <coughs> right. Yeah. So what I'm trying to establish, because I think you probably did answer the question, but I didn't understand the answer there in there. Okay, sorry. So keep it at it. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you go above my pay grade, but anyway. Oh, sorry. So, so in simple terms, simple terms, we're born with an imprint. Not an imprint, a temperament. A Not temperament. an imprint, a temperament. We then come imprinted. Okay, so we're born with a temperament. Like a, like, would that be like a soul signature type thing? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, that's, that's beyond my pay grade. You know, I just know that, you know, anyone who's a mother will see that their children don't come out the same. Mm, that's true. They have different needs. They have different wants. They have different values. They have, they're different. Mm. So each one has each individual being who comes into this world has its own temperament okay so that's so what this is what i'm saying so we're born with the temperament and then we develop okay whatever those ex existential circumstances are we develop a personality right so the strategy yeah, it's the a strategy the personality and yeah. temperament are they are they born out of each other are they all rolled up into one um or are they two different things like a you know, at the end of the day, you can't separate anything. You can kind of tease them out to, to, to discern them and to um, clarify them. But at the end of the day, I don't think anything is separate. Okay. Um, the, reason, the reason that I ask so, that is yeah? because when I look at the Enneagram, and I've done it at a very basic level, um, we get these numbers and we get the personality types. Okay. And they call called you get a personality types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is yeah, they are. Personality type is, is, that, is that my soul spark, or is that no, who no. I become? No, 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 not your soul spark. As I say, your personality type describes a strategy okay. you have adopted mm -hmm. in order to deal with your disappointments, hurts, losses, and overwhelms okay right okay that's it's a strategy that's what, yeah. and that's the key error a lot of people make you know if somebody comes out of an enneagram weekend say, oh now i know who i am i'm saying mm. oh you've missed the point <laughs> you know your personality or your strategy is what shows up when you don't yeah, right it's the autopilot mm. it's the kind of you know life has to have a way to function when we're not conscious mm. and so it creates habits and patterns mm. And it's like an autopilot and it's really, you know, important to recognize that the structures that have developed and, you know, they same the same for a ninth of the people. Um, you didn't create them. They created themselves. Mm. You know, Tanya is a happening. We have this illusion that we created it or we formulated, you know, you didn't make a choice about your defenses or your attractions or your repuls repulsion. You didn't make a choice about anything of that. Mm -hmm. it you found yourself in the happening of it mm -hmm. and in the happening of it it impacted you in certain ways mm -hmm. touched you in certain ways 
-hmm. and that's the kind of feedback loop between you know these movement this movement of relation you know i bring myself out into the world and the world feeds itself back to me and i bring myself and that creates a kind of feedback loop, and that starts informing how things develop mm -hmm. Okay, and so, uh, my next question there, Sonia, would be, but so it, it will change. Obviously, we are evolving, everything is fluid. So if I, when I did my Enneagram, let me just tell you this, I was a seven, okay, which mm -hmm. I knew before I did the Enneagram that I would be a seven. And I said, well, I think I'm going to be a seven. I was a seven. Now, this is a label. This is a, um, it, it's, it almost gives you a sort of sense of identity, you know, things like that. And I no, think, you, well, I, I'm so that, much more than a seven, actually. No, but, that, but then you, I'm going to say, then you're missing the point. If somebody is taking it as an identity, they've missed the point. Exactly. They've actually missed the point. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. You know, that's why you have to take the Enneagram to the deeper levels because the deeper le everyone has the whole of the Enneagram within them. We all have access to all the domains of presence. Mm. Okay. Mm. But what makes you a seven? Dear to your heart, dear to, I mean, something that you get up for in the morning. Mm -hmm. I love freedom. Mm. I love joy. Mm. I love possibility i love my half glass half full yeah. and that's natural to you yeah it's completely natural to you mm -hmm. now other people around the enneagram that's not it's not natural to them mm. okay mm. it's not natural to them as you know right whereas for a two it's very natural for them to be attuned and compassionate and, and empathic for another person that's i have to learn that Mm. because it's not natural to me and that's what i kind of mean by your temperament there's something that's very natural to you and which for which you are the avatar for that facet of the unity mm -hmm. because that's an expression of the essence of life mm -hmm. freedom right joy and all of them are each one and that's the beauty of it each one is a domain that expresses a resource and a capacity and a presence of life itself mm. which you don't have to have some kind of faith in because you can actually feel it in your experience exactly yeah yeah so but okay but now here's my little caveat to all of that mm. is that for you to be the fullest seven you can possibly be and be the fullest expression of that energy that you are here to bring into the life you have to develop all the rest mm. <laughs> you have to start learning about all the rest all the other i understand that and then the, the, so, yeah, so, so that at the end of the, the day when i go in freedom or project that are they good once you are your complete in your wholeness then you still have the seven expression which is just like a funnel for you to express that completeness or the wholeness you still have the seven yeah i'm not sure wholeness has such a thing called completion mm. you know I, I think wholeness is way vaster than we can even know mm. okay but what, so uh, once we have all those other aspects and we've kind of mastered it you still have your your number expression <laughs> that's the seven by which you then um yeah you'll never more. you'll never lose you'll never lose your natural expression but you will bring it into balance mm -hmm. because the whole thing of when i'm fixated with my personality type there's certain mm -hmm. imbalances that occur mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so sevens for example they're one of the heart repressed types mm -hmm. so it's very easy for you to do and be active and very easy for you to think it's not so easy for you to really feel Mm. Mm. or connect huh? that easily yeah yeah. yeah exactly so so that's again that's the information that the enneagram is so good at, at feeding back to us is okay so where are my imbalances not mm. only in my you know heart head gut intelligences because we have three brains heart head gut um but also even in my instincts you know where are the imbalances there you mm. know because somebody who's the uh, the social seven will be different to someone who's a self-preservational seven. Mm. 
So mm. it carries, you know, all these nuances um, within it. But mm. the point is not to find some perfect description of how you leave yourself. Right. The point is to see how you leave yourself so that you can come back to yourself. Mm. Mm. And what's that journey? And what does that entail? And what do I need to start being more cognizant of and aware of in order to bring myself back into it. You can't expect unity in the outer world without each of us finding the unity within ourselves. And you know, there's not a lot of people I know that who really have that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we're all over the place and we need to get real with that. Would, 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 you, would you call that, that coming back to yourself and being unified with yourself? Could you give it a, call it almost like sovereignty? Yeah, <laughs> sovereignty. Um, you know, we also, you can also talk about autonomy, uh, autonomy in the same sort of mm. thing. Um, mm. You know, I think when we start to bringing, out, bringing ourselves into more coherence and more aligned with the natural law, we really do um, start recognizing that our idea of ourselves is not what brings us sovereignty. When we become more aligned with our, the, the natural spiritual movement, I, I like Miranda McPherson's, like, when we give ourselves back to our, our and come restore the natural movement and really pay attention to that. What we realize is that something is born in us that has its own sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It's not that I have sovereignty, Sonia, mm. but there is something sovereign in me that can express when I am correctly aligned. Mm -hmm. So as we get deeper and deeper into the spiritual work, we start, we start losing the possessive pronoun. It's not mm. my strength. It's not my intelligence. It's not mine. It's life's strength. It's life's intelligence. I am a movement of life. I am not an entity. I am a movement. I am a process. And that's a completely different story. Mm. I feel the reason that I, I bring up this um, this sovereignty is because you brought up um, uh, living in oneness and unity. You brought that up. You know, once we sort of come back to ourselves, then we can begin to live in unity. And so I feel like, and, and there's a lot of this banding around in our um, spiritual fields, so to speak. Okay, it's all about living in in unity and um non-duality which is all good and well i think when we sort of up the scale like that and um, but even if you look at, so take it out of the personal if you look into the global stage okay we we countries are building walls and becoming more sovereign and i feel like in a sense that is the right thing to do because even on a personal level this is where we get, we have to sort of just get back uh, all of our powers, our strengths, our understandings. Um, and when we have that, and if, I know you want to call it maybe a wholeness, I would call it maybe a strength, um, that when we are in that situation, only then can we really enter this, this realm of unification. Otherwise, we're getting a lot of broken pieces of a puzzle. Yeah, I think one, you know, I think one of the things that we have to do, yeah, I, I think one of the things us human beings have to give up the idea is the idea that we can possibly know what's required. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you can't strategize this stuff. I mean, you can try to be kinder or more loving and stuff, but trying is very trying. Mm, it is. And it's trying, to, it's trying to be something that is not naturally there. You know, there's something is there when it's naturally there. Mm -hmm. That kindness is something that just moves from me naturally, as opposed to me being an individual trying to be kind because I think that's a good idea and will serve the unity. Mm. Right? 
I don't know what will serve the unity. The only way I can learn how to serve the unity is become by becoming by dissolving into that unity so that it can serve itself because mm -hmm. it knows it knows right it knows well wow, you know, this human arrogance that we have that we think we can know is actually something that has got us into a lot of this trouble yeah 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 for sure. No, I, I, I think I also it's wonder how, how we were not quite evolved enough to get that, Sonia. You know, I think with humanity still have got a lot of evolving to do. Oh, absolutely. Is that, you know, the, the consciousness of humanity and the development of consciousness is very, very young. Very. I mean, when you look at our three brains and you look at our reptilian brain, survival brain, I mean, this is, this is the thing that's really rearing its It's very old. It's very powerful. Mm. very powerful and so the limbic brain our reactive brain it's very powerful mm. and the consciousness brain is in you know still you know it's gone into hyper rationalization and, and, and which hasn't worked too great either mm. um, and, you know it's bringing how do i bring those three things in together um to be more aligned um so i think it's much more time for listening than it is for strategizing mm -hmm. Mm. I think that's that's some very really good advice right there. I do it's think it's more so. of a time for listening than for mm. strategizing or thinking. You know, we really are being thrust into the now. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. having all our routines disrupted. Um, you know, because routines give us a sense of predictability. Predictability gives us a sense, the illusion of control. Mm. When all of that's disrupted, you know, what becomes frightened is, you know, this, oh, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to lose control. You mm. never had it. Mm. You never had it. You just thought you did. It's in, in, and those in are the kind of, any, you know, those are the kind of realities we have to get real with. You know, you, you don't have control. But when, we, when we're having a crisis, Sonia, and I think it's even like that in the world, um, if you go right back to the beginning of the formation of the planet, there was always conflict between bacteria. You know, yeah. and that was how yeah, we started. Yeah, yeah. And it was a, a, through, through the yeah. conflict that we actually yeah. grew up involved. So then maybe in this crisis now, this is what it's kind of doing is pushing us, you know, putting us under <clears throat> pressure to just evolve a little bit quicker maybe, you know, maybe take a little bit of a leap in, in evolution, consciousness-wise. Look, you know, the, the way evolution evolves is through disruption. There's no question. Exactly. You know, you, you, that's how it goes. You disruption, and then you kind of get a, you know, and then you hit a ceiling, and then mm. you need another disruption. Mm. The Enneagram of process describes that how you need shock points mm -hmm. for something to shift mm -hmm. into a, 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 <clears throat> a cycle of higher complexity. Okay. That that's what disruption on a higher order. You know, we tend to think in duality, which is disruption and harmony. Mm. Um, but on a higher level, on a higher level, the mm. harmony is disruption and harmony. Because mm. that's, <clears throat> you know, how, how it moves up and develops itself. So, you know, that's why we shouldn't get so overwhelmed with disruption. We have to learn that this is a natural process of life. And how do I relax into it? Mm. Mm. You know, it's, it's all about how do I relax in things? It's not about getting rid of anything. And even <clears throat> to talk about, we have to get be in the non-dual. The non-dual includes the dual. Exactly. It's not separate from it. <laughs> it's not separate from the high orders of integration include what come before it. It doesn't do away with it. The, okay. You know, it's like it's inclusive. It has to we have to know how to work the duality from the place of non-duality. Helps well, us it, even us. even in yeah. other those uh, metaphysical called the new age movements, and we're talking about three D, five D, and all of the rest. Everybody wants to be living in five D, and I just mm. look at it and think, well, you can't be doing that unless you're in three D. You know? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm I'm there with you, Tanya. I also have that. You know, I don't even know what all of those mean, and and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of, and again, this is another thing Enneagram really is quite strong about, you know, we already are transcendent. The point is not to be transcendent. The point is to embody the transcendence. Uh-huh. 
it's to be an anchor for it in the world uh-huh and that so it's not about trying to get out and going to the transcendence but how do i bring that and anchor it in the world so it can be a living presence right here right now exactly. but i wouldn't want to escape it you Me neither. Know? <laughs> I, I would just you know what does it mean um i quite like adishanti's word where he, where he talks about you know um spirit humanizing itself mm -hmm. I, I like that idea of well, what does it mean to be humanized where is our humanity what is our humanity where do we even find it do you know we're the only creature in the world that doesn't know how to be itself i believe that it has to ask yeah and learn i mean there's a you know what's that about <laughs> what's that about yeah so so i think it's um i think the challenge for us really is to find not to escape into other worlds but to really what does it really mean to be fully human vulnerable sensitive in mm. this world mm. and and it's, it's also a very it's a multi-dimensional multi-layered thing what we're talking about isn't it and it's, absolutely so from i mean from the enneagram perspective from another perspective for me which i i love all the interdimensional stuff is to connect it's like an expansion it's not a, a going up you know it's it's like this ball yeah. of expansion and within that ball is all myself and all those bad aspects and then around are all the other aspects to me you know the off-planet um, associations the the godly connections and maybe the not so godly connections but whatever bringing all of that back in as you say and it's more about bringing it in rather than trying to get out of it and go higher and well, go again higher. you know i would just you know i wouldn't sort of say bringing it in it's already in mm. it's Connect. already in we are made of the stuff of life mm. that's what we're made of right. we are made of the stuff galaxies and amoeba and everything that evolution took to create this human being mm. it's here mm. we made of it okay so it's not about trying to bring anything in mm. it's about developing the sensitivity to feel it in within ourselves as mm. this is what i am mm. yeah you know and in that certainly the most expansive experiences that, that i've had have come from the deepest part of my being in my body mm. where it's so deep in my body that my body disappears mm. and yet there's a presence and a feeling and a sensation mm. of being here mm. you know in a sort of more amorphous kind of way but i i've never had that going up and up no no, you know, oh, not about up and up. up it's really up. about down and how deep can I go? It's depth. Depth is also one of the qualities, and in depth is beauty. Yeah. Well, you're not living, you know what I mean? If you're so terrified of death, then you're not really living. And I think it's one of the biggest things that's been highlighted to me in this whole what's going on right now is this absolute fear of death and an unhealthy fear. I mean, we should probably all be a bit skeptical here, but, but an unhealthy fear of death. Yeah, but you know, we have to understand that that's kind of being um, culturally, culturally, you know, not, not all, that's not true of all cultures. Mm. Certainly for the Western uh, culture it is, but I don't think all cultures share the same um, fear and defensiveness against it. But yeah, I, I do really think it, there is a, it's, um, it's something in the West we have a very unhealthy relationship with as a part of life death is a part of life we live a whole okay sorry sonia so we got a bit interrupted there so you were saying that um you're not really living until you die just expand on that a little bit <laughs> you were saying that i was saying that okay <laughs> <laughs> um well, you know, I think dying is, is, is kind of the ultimate surrender to life. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fundamental aspect of life. We wouldn't have this life if there wasn't death. Right. And it's that kind of giving ourselves back to our origin in a way. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it is something we've all got to get grounded with and get real with and, and begin integrating because the more we can integrate that, the more our life can be governed for the love of it or by the love of it rather than the fear of it because mm. of this death. Mm. <clears throat> no, I, I think it's, it's something, I think people should really hold workshops about the whole, and, and as you say, in other cultures, they do, it's just non gratis accepted. But certainly yeah. in our culture, it seems to be a bit of a problem. Yeah. Sonia, I just want to um, switch gears because we're actually running out of time a little bit here now. So what parting advice would you give to people right now who are going through this crisis? Um, I think fundamentally one of the things that we need to detach from is our story making and really you know no, none of us actually know what's going on there's so many forces and influences and tons of information out there that you'd have to be a pretty realized being to know what's actually going on and so instead of trying to figure out what's going to happen or how to strategize or uh, you know from a place of not knowing is to really turn back in and sort of say you know ask ourselves well what are we bringing to the soup you know what am i aligned with what am i living and am i aligned with fear and separation and blame judgment or am i more aligned with love and connection and uh, inclusion and empathy you know where am i living from um, you know, because sort of we pitted in this polarity in a way uh, between, you know, this is the, the evolutionary leap we've been waiting for, blah, blah, blah. And the other one, which is, this is the ultimate dystopia in the making, blah, blah, blah. And here we are, and actually both are plausible. It's not that far-fetched. Mm -hmm. And um, both are possible, you know, so... What, what does that mean for me when I don't know? And I really think if we can be more grounded in ourselves, um, in the not knowing, and come back to ourselves and breathe and give um, our lives space to contemplate, to kind of reevaluate re what our lives are about and what they're for. And if, we are, if I'm full of fear and stuff about dying, let me start looking at that stuff. What am, you know, because mm -hmm. this is a fact of life and, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to die. Whether it's not now, it's going to happen. It's unavoidable. So there's, uh, you know, a time in my life that I have to face that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is the ultimate fear and all of that, but I have to face it. Um, and to find things that nourish, you know, like connection, like animals, like... Uh, you know, whatever you do that, that lets your nervous system settle because that's what, you know, we are nervous systems and we are activated and our prime sort of um, survival instinct is this fight, flight, freeze kind of thing going on. And we need to know how to self-regulate and learn how to breathe into that and relax into it. Not mm. to get rid of it, but just to have more of a ground, more of a base, more space mm. to contain the myriad of forces that are going on because it's it's huge mm. there's huge stuff going on mm. and how do i regulate myself in that so that i can be a, a grounded presence to it uh, because i really believe that what we're bringing to it <coughs> is what's going to determine which way it flows mm. i agree you know, yep. we, you know we're the ones who set up the influences so what am i bringing to the soup is a good question as we're sitting and thinking and doing all the stuff that we're doing, we're actually creating like a magnetic field that's going to magnetize, you know, whatever is going to happen. We're creating it. I think more and more people are coming to that understanding, though, Sonia. I certainly hope so. But anyway, Sonia, we are really running out of time. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Oh, no, pleasure. And okay. I just wanted to ask you now, if people wanted to get hold of you, I know that we were, you were doing quite a lot of workshops. I think that might have evolved to online. Uh, do you want to just tell us what you're doing and how we can get hold of you? 
Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm not, I'm not really um, running workshops online. I run circles online, but these are kind of established circles and they, they're circles with people that have already done the workshops with mm. me. Um, so not as yet. And, and I am hoping, you know, because yeah, it's nice to gather people in person and, and something beautiful about the Enneagram and doing it in groups, it really gives you, it really gives you the, the, the perception of how different we are, how the same we are and how different we are mm -hmm. equally at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and so to have an experience of other people and, and where they're coming from and what their gift is, um, is a really useful thing to have. Mm. You know, creates more tolerance because not every you know we make this qualitative error that other people think and feel like we do and, and if they don't they should well that's arguable you know should they? Well, um, I, I must say i'm sometimes like that you know sometimes yeah, we all like are that, that, that. oh yeah for sure we all are but that's one of the learnings you know we need to drop that that kind of perception and, and really realize that who are we to say how life should move in another being, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to uh, come on to my, I'm hoping that I'll, I'll be able to start running workshops again soonish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, if the whole thing keeps on being a shutdown, then there's a possibility I might develop for online. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't as yet. But uh, yeah, if people want to join, I've got a WhatsApp group, um, uh, which is workshop notifications. So anything that I do, whether it's Enneagram or trauma release or conscious communication or whatever it is that I'm running, um, they'll get a notification on it. Okay. So the number is 0772-240-165. Okay. And if you want to join, just send me a WhatsApp and I'll join you to the group and then you'll be advised if you want to know of anything else that's on offer, whether it's online or preferably in person. Right. It's more fun that way. But I, yeah. I'll put all of those, the, that information at the bottom of this uh, recording. And also to yeah. say, are you on the Awaken Away group or Alternative News? Which one are you? I'm on the Alternative News, uh, not on the Awaken Away. I'm on okay, the Alternative News. So Alternative News. News is another place where, you know, for those that are on those groups, um, can also yeah. look up and I do, I'll put usually, the information yeah. Up. yeah and usually if I'm advertising a workshop then I I run it on alternative news as well okay yeah. no, it's super. okay so the best of luck let's watch and see how organically that develops for you Sonia we either gonna have lots yeah. of workshops or online or you know it's quite exciting yeah, who, know, who knows you know it's it's uncharted ground we're in we're we're in a place of learning and I think that's you know, disruptions are always places of learning, and mm. uh, that's a good thing if we can just moderate ourselves to yeah, exactly embrace to it. it and not reject yeah. it so much. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sonia, yeah. thank you very much. I'm sure that we'll have you back because we've got a trillion different things to talk about with you. Uh, great, bless and, you and uh, bless everyone. Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, please, everybody who is listening, or everyone who's listened to this, maybe. Uh, just share it, spread it out, because you know everyone's at a different level of, of understanding, picking up, and it, this sort of information I think will resonate with a lot of people. So mm. if you do that, I appreciate it. Mm. Mm. So thank you everybody, yeah. and until the next Thank you, time. thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Yeah. Bye. Blessings. Ciao.